Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about The Last Man, written by Mary Shelley. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, this work by Mary Shelley is, um, it has many layers to it. There's a lot that's happening within this work. Um, from where the story begins, it's not where you would think it would end. Um, because within this work, there's a uh, pandemic, there's wars, there's um, love stories, there's conflicts, there's battles, there's um, individuals who are after ambition, there's, there's individuals who are just trying to survive. Um, so you really get a taste of many different um, a taste of many different sides of life to this work. Um, because when I first started reading it, you know, I, I just, I thought it was going to be about, uh, you know, Lionel Verney, Perdita, you know, the, the, the siblings. Um, and, and, and for the most part, the novel is about these two individuals. Uh, but there's just so much incorporated into it. Um, and you wouldn't think that when you first sit down to read it. Um, so basically, uh, this novel begins with us being introduced to uh, Lionel and um, Perdita, uh, their siblings, their father um, did not leave them in a good position. Their, their parents died when they were very young. Uh, by the time uh, Lionel was five and Perdita was three, they were on their own. Uh, they didn't have um, a fortune to pretty much rely upon. They didn't have a trust fund to rely upon. So pretty much they, they had, they didn't have any money. They didn't have um, any family members to take care of them. Um, and, you know, as a young kid, um, Lionel, you know, started working for this farmer and he just became this, you know, kid who's in the wild working for a farmer um, and doing what he can to get by. Um, you know, him and his sister, they were kind of separated at the beginning of their lives. Um, and just some people took pity on them because, you know, they didn't have anything. They weren't going to school. They didn't have an education. Um, their father was, was very high up in society, but they were pretty much cast out by the royal family. Um, and uh, Adrian, uh, when the king dies, Adrian um, heard a lot about um, his father's friends. Um, and it's through his father he learned about Lionel, Lionel's father, um, and he we get introduced to Adrian at the beginning of the book, um, and and his connection with Lionel and his connection and his father's connections with Lionel's father, um, and how they 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 go back, um, you know they were friends in the past, and so Adrian. When we're first introduced to him, he's you know he he's he's rich. He's part of the the royal family. Um, you would expect him to look down upon Lionel and Perdita, but he actually invests in them. Um, it's by his generosity, by by his um, will that Lionel becomes a civilized individual. He is taken away from his life as um, a farmhand. Um, and, and he's sent to school, he gets an education, um, and his life, Lionel's life and Perdita's life, they, it, their lives change. So the novel goes on, um, and, and lots of things happen. We, we see Lionel develop, we see Perdita develop into proper individuals. Um, you know, Lionel was pretty much a, a beast, a kid that was probably going to be evil or probably descend into... Um, perhaps even crime and things like that to survive because he had no one and nothing. Um, so, you know, when Adrian comes in and says, you know, my father knew your father, uh, my father and your father were close, uh, that means we're supposed to be close and, and they do become, um, you know, really close within this novel um, and they have each other's back within this novel. Um, and it's fascinating to see, to see that interaction between those two characters um, and Perdita, Perdita, her, Lionel's story, you know, this, this book is narrated uh, by Lionel. It's, it's his story. Uh, we see things from his perspective a lot. Um, Perdita's story is very interesting, and it's, it's pretty much um, 
on the coattails on the coattails of Lionel's story. Um, her story doesn't end happily as you would think. Well, no one's story ends happily uh, within this this work. Um, so the story goes on. Um, we see Lionel develop this love interest uh, to Idris, which is um, Adrian's sister. Uh, we see a character by the Ra by the name of Raymond come into the picture, um, and eventually, what happens is Perdita and, and Raymond get married. Uh, but when we first introduced to Raymond, he's not you know a great guy because he was all about power and prestige and and taking over and conquering. Uh, he wanted to marry Idris so that he could have a path to the throne, um, and he ends up with Perdita. Perdita loves him, or her, her, um, like, she loved him a lot, um, and, and it really destroyed her when uh, Raymond ends up cheating on her um, and having an affair because they eventually get married. Perdita's in love, and, you know, we would think that Raymond was in love too, but he ends up cheating on her. Um, and so his character is very interesting because there, there's several parts where he's at war, you know, he's making his fortunes at war, he, he's, in the, he's in different militaries in, in Europe, in Greece, uh, and he's making his money, he's making a name for himself, he's thinking about uh, becoming someone of power in England, uh, but at the same time he's hurting Perdita, and as when, when you're reading this novel, uh, you're rooting for Perdita and Lionel and, and their futures because, you know, you saw them when they had nothing and when, you know, they were orphans and you just want the best for them. Um, so uh, the novel goes on. We see uh, Lionel and Idris eventually uh, getting married. Now, it wasn't that easy. Uh, their path to for them to get married, it wasn't that easy, especially uh, since uh, uh, Adrian's uh, and and um, Idris's father, um, not father, their mother did not accept Lionel and and Perdita at first because again they're coming from nothing and and first she she's the one that pretty much um, signed off on sending Lionel's family away and and you know severing those tied tied between um, Lionel's family and the throne, um, so she wasn't that kindly towards Lionel at first, and it took her a long time to accept Lionel uh, throughout the story, throughout the novel. Uh, so the story goes on, and we see, um, you know, Lionel, he gets married to Idris. Uh, they have kids, you know, they, Lionel, you know, he makes uh, a profit for himself, he makes a name for himself, he gets educated, uh, he becomes, I mean, between Lionel, Raymond, um, and and Adrian, I mean, we, we when you look at it, it's, it's um, Adrian and Raymond are always um, in a way above Lionel, but at the same time, throughout the novel, you see them as being equals at certain parts uh, because you know Lionel pretty much get gets that stain of being an orphan and being poor um, off of his record. Um, so <clears throat> Adrian doesn't. You know, we don't see him get married and have kids. Um, Adrian is this figure that he's groomed to, to, he was groomed to be wealthy, to be in power, to have power. Uh, we don't see him, you know, take that power. We don't see him hunger for power like Raymond does. Um, he doesn't get married, which is quite different because usually in, in novels, um, everyone usually gets hitched. Everyone usually has a love interest. Everyone usually ends up with kids and we have a happily ever after. So Adrian's story ends up differently. He ends up dying at sea by the end of the novel. Um, and, and a lot of other characters end up dying. Um, so after we get through the, the beginning, their lives, what happens to um, you know Perdita from the beginning of their lives, um, we learn of the affair between... Um, or the affair that, that Raymond had... Uh, pretty much, Perdina never stopped loving Raymond. Um, she goes at some, at certain points throughout the novel. We see Adrian get lost, and Lionel goes out to find him, and Raymond gets lost, and other people go out to find him. 
this is a very you know uh, it's a long novel and it's we're going across europe and greece and different countries because these individuals are part of the monarchy they have money they have power and they can get around unlike the peasants and unlike other types of people so they they, they move around europe a lot they move around different countries a lot and certain times they get lost and they go they have to go find each other um you know so, so sometimes it's kind of like a, a, a um the novel ends up being you know a finding nemo special um but it's kind of like the monarchy ver version when when lionel goes out to find adrian and then you know sometimes they go out to find raymond um so perdita never stops loving raymond uh, at a certain point she goes out to find him raymond ends up dying um on the ship back from f going to find raymond perdita commits suicide because she never really stopped loving uh raymond and so i guess you know she commits suicide and, and i guess that was the better option than living without raymond um and raymond i mean he was just head over heels uh for for his mistress and for the girl that she he cheated um on on perdita for so you know that's it's both sad because perdita's life does not end up i guess ha as happy as lionel's did uh, yes, she gets married. Yes, you know, she she loved Raymond, and yes, they had a life together. But at the same time, the affair and her suicide—I mean, that that was very that was very sad. That it was just not fortunate. Um, Lionel, however, he has several kids. Uh, Idris loves him. He loves Idris. They had a good life together, and and everything was was just wonderful. Um, Adrian is just this bachelor that, that, you know, takes on positions and leads people. He goes throughout. I mean, we even see um, Raymond and, and, and Adrian, they go, they fight against each other. They were in, in charge of different armies or part of different armies, and they go to war with each other. This stuff was just, it, it there's just so much that goes into it and, and into the wars, into the love, into the uh, the love interest and all. And it, it, there's several sides to it. Um, so... After all of this takes place, Raymond dies, Perdita dies, um, we pretty much meet a new threat. Uh, so, you know, we've gone past the threats of poverty and, and, and being an orphan and, and pretty much everything that happened in the beginning of the novel, we're over that. Uh, we pretty much get uh, to this plague, this plague that's, that's pretty much killing everyone. Um, and a lot of wars were happening and... and Lionel and Adrian, they there were you know several points throughout the novel where they go out through different wars, but what eventually you know ends everything um, is that this plague um, just just comes in, um, you know, and the things that like, we're not clear exactly what this plague is. Um, some people say it's similar to cholera, uh, but but we're not sure, um, and it's just pretty much going around killing people people are getting high fevers now since it is 2021 um, um i wouldn't say, i mean it's it doesn't seem like it's similar to to the coronavirus i mean a lot of people are within a novel they're getting fevers they're they, they're dying and there's no cure for it um, I mean, in terms of how it spreads in the novel, in terms of how it spreads from person to person, it has the feeling of the coronavirus, but on, on a much deadlier scale because these individuals were, were just dying. I mean, I'm, thousands and millions are just dying. Um, and it, it doesn't seem like, I mean, the only individual that we can be assured, that we can be sure of being immune to this virus within or this plague within the novel is lionel because he you know he got the the plague or the virus and he didn't die um so there's a lot of questions to be asked about this virus and this plague um so the novel goes on this plague is is literally it's everywhere it's in america it's in every country it's just killing people um, um, immigrants and people are fleeing their countries, going to Europe, going to England, and, you know, at certain times people say that, oh, you know, it's only um, attacking people in, in warmer climates or in, in colder climates, and everybody has their theories and where they should go and where they should stay, but the virus just goes everywhere. 
um, and um, it's it, it just keeps on going and going to the point where they just um, Adrian and Lionel, uh, the the children that he that you know Lionel's children, his wife, they all decide that they're gonna leave England, they're gonna leave the country, and more people keep dying, and along the way, Idris dies, um, all of Lionel's kids die. Um, you know, one by one they die. They don't all just die at once. One by one, his kids just just die, and it's it's very de like the novel gets really gloomy and dark and gray because when you think about England and you think about the history of England, you think about the people, the beauty and the parks and the flowers and and the decor and just all the wonderful things that go into making England beautiful. You just see within this novel how. The description that Mary Shelley gives us on how people are ripping out, you know, are destroying parks to plant food because, I mean, everybody's running away from their countries coming into England. They need food, so they need the parks to plant food. They're planting food here and there, ripping up um, parks. They're, they're throwing, you know, together places to, to sleep or to eat and to just survive. And then the plague comes in and they start dying there, so there's nowhere to go. Um, and everyone just keeps dying, but Lionel doesn't die, and, and Adrian doesn't die, and for a while, Idris doesn't die, but she ends up dying, and her kids that she tries to protect, and other people that she finds pity on and she tries to protect, they all, they all die. Um, so, th it's the end of the love stories, it's the end of the world we knew, and, and by the end of the novel, we're just stuck with um, Adrian, Lionel, um, and Clara, and pretty much um, they do the best that they can to survive. They go from place to place and encounter different types of people. But um, Adrian and Clara ends up dying in a in at sea and Lionel is the only one that survives. And then he, at the end of the novel, ends up going to Rome and exploring different um, countries that are, there's no one there. Those countries are just pretty much dead everyone's dead and and i mean we're just left with lionel and he's the last man he thinks about suicide um hmm yeah i mean he thinks about suicide he thinks about ending it all he he explores for a while um and he's all by himself isolated and alone and pretty much the novel ends up ends up um, ends with him just going off on his own. Um, in terms of deeper meaning, in terms of analysis here, this novel it just it's packed with 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 so much. Um, when you first start reading it, you don't you're not thinking of a plague or a virus or anything like that. It's just these two orphans that you you want to see how their lives end up, and you would expect it would end up. You know in a happy place but no no not at all it ends up in in you know world destruction it ends up it starts off with two kids who are unfortunate who are orphaned to a global catastrophe um i mean it just it's not what i expected when i first started reading it it's just not it's it didn't take you where you thought it was going to take you, which is very um, surprising. Um, like from my my first thought would would be, um, it's you know from from rags to riches, and and you would see Lionel and, and, and Perdita um, climb up the ranks from orphan and poverty to you know being uh, you know with high members of society and then being in wealth and then living happily after. Um, happily ever after with a bunch of children but no uh, Mary Shelley is like no um, we're going to end the world we are going to kill out kill them all and um, here comes a plague and this virus and there you go and then at the end when you think that Adrian and, and Lionel they're gonna make it they're gonna maybe find some other people and continue their lives no they, they die too and then I mean, I guess it stays true to the, the book's name, The Last Man, and he truly was the last man. Now, we don't know at the end of the novel if he'll find more people. 
maybe he will. He sets off to find, you know, maybe there's like a remote island somewhere where people still exist. That's not, you know, that's not far-fetched. That could be uh, the case. Um, so maybe he'll find somebody out there or and, and maybe not. Maybe he won't find anybody. But Lionel is on his own. And um, yeah, my, my perspective is that the only reason why he probably survived the virus and everybody else sort of died, well, everybody else did die, did die, yeah. Uh, the only reason why I think that is because in his early life when he was an orphan and he had to work for this farmer, he worked um, hard in the fields, you know, he was a farmhand and he worked hard, he worked in nature, he worked uh, with his hands, so probably those days spent toiling in the dirt and, uh, um, you know, his immune system probably, you know, got stronger every day to the point where this plague didn't affect him. But at the same time, you could just argue saying that, well, how come the other farmers died? Um, died? So it could just be genetics. Um, maybe if Perdita was still alive, maybe she wouldn't have died, um, wouldn't have died because of the plague. So maybe it's just genetics here. Um, or maybe he's just the main character and, um, um, you know, he was written to, to live as the last man. Uh, so that, it's, it, that's very fascinating. Um, there's, there's some philosophy in this, the conversations between Adrian and Raymond, um, it, it goes into, you know, the role of man or behavior of man. Um, you know, you see the role of monarchy and, and pretty much what happens when monarchy loses all of its power, um, and just how these lines and these barriers, because like when um, Adrian and, and Idris and, and, you know, when they were in the realm of royalty and they were above everyone, they, they walked around with prestige and pride and, and this, this, you know, everybody is beneath them. But when, you know, a plague is going around and people are dying and, and no, one start, no one cares about that anymore because uh, they, they're just... Everybody's just trying to stay alive. Everybody's just trying to save their own skin. Um, so that 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 is very fascinating. Um, so th this novel is, I think, for me, the, the twist is is major. Um, it did not lead me where I thought I was going. Um, it built up Lionel and Perdita for success, and then it killed everyone. Um, so so there you go. So there you go. So maybe, you know, sometimes things might look great. Maybe this is what you can take home from this this book um, or just for reading for what you can get it out of it for your own personal life. Maybe it's, it's another way of saying that, you know, sometimes things look so clear and you're heading towards success, but one sharp twist could just end in... A world epidemic. Um, yeah. So that's my summary and analysis of this book, guys. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.